There's a couple places. One, I thought about my mom. Like, I think of the show as, like, being archetypical, where, like, each character has sort of, like, a familial role, where, like, Richard is the favored son, Ehrlich's kind of the belligerent father, uh, Dinesh is, like, the baby, um, uh, Guilfoyle's the cat, I feel like, just kind of, like, watchful and quietly disdainful from, like, a high perch. And then uh, Jared, I think of as sort of, like, the self-abnegating mom. So I thought a lot about my mom. And any time I improvise on the show, like, things that Jared likes, I try to think of things that, like, my mom and her friends might like, like, the books he likes, <laughs> the things he spends money on. Like, in my head, he, like, loves, like, lightly scented candles and Linda Ronstadt records and stuff. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and then also I thought another thing I based it on is like, I don't know if you guys had this when you were growing up, but I always feel like, like when I was uh, in middle school, there were like teenage girls who were like sometimes like the smartest girl in the room, but because of sexism or just the awkwardness of adolescence, like were less inclined to speak up or something. So just sort of like privately, quietly, enormously capable and have like a rich interior life, but very like... So I remember I read, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Because I was like, I feel like Jared weirdly would be into this book. <laughs> so those are sort of some of the things I based it on. And that's where you sort of pull from when you're improvising a little bit? Yeah, I try to, well, that, I tr okay, so I try to think of like sort of maternal, like 60-year-old woman specifics. Um, it kind of makes sense because you could imagine Jared as a kid who spent most of his time with someone like a mother. Well, know? that's the thing. I go, yeah, I go back and forth. Like, so, so I try to do stuff like, that's like demographically appropriate to like a certain type of six-year-old woman. But then also, I imagine that he's been like had an enormously traumatizing life. Uh, that he's just been like endlessly resilient from like I always think like what sort of traumas do you think he I've faced? improvised so much crazy shit on the show most of it doesn't make it in but once in a while something will sneak in like I had this thing where his like parents died in a seaplane accident and then he bounced around from like all these awful foster homes and like he used to have to fight his stepfather's dogs to earn the respect of his family <laughs> and all this crazy stuff and uh, so that means that he can fight yeah I mean dogs yeah <laughs> But I find that I think that scene would be incredible if one time he's forced into a fight and we see that he's actually like a really great fighter for well, some I, reason. Well, I I love that like when they made this guy. guy am I allowed to curse? Yeah. I'm gonna do it. Ready? Here it comes. Three, two, one. This guy fucks. Fuck. I said it. I'm gonna say it again. Fuck. <laughs> uh, uh, when he got, when it turns out that Jared is actually has a healthy and somewhat prolific sex life, I was like I was really psyched about that. A because. It's cool, but like also because I think it redeems the character from just being this sort of emasculated eunuch who's sort of a doofus. Like the fact that he's um, has like healthy sexuality, I think is like makes him a more interesting guy. And in the same weird way, I feel like him being able to defend himself physically would be the same thing. Mm -hmm.